You are currently the only person in this conference.
Okay, let's take a small clip, three minutes. That's why Indian people never play villains in movies. Have you noticed that? All the big movies, James Bond, when I... It's the infamous terrorist.
Okay, let's start. So I'm just uh, start recording on it. So today's uh, tutorial on free convection. The first problem we'll be uh, doing is uh, the chula. So most of you from the north know what a chula is. In for others who don't know, a chula is this. And what you see here is uh, an award-winning design. Um, it's called the Index Award. And it was uh, made in uh, Pune by Philips Company, Philips Design. And it's actually, it's got an IIT Bombay connection. It's from alumnus. It's an alumnus of IIT Bombay uh, from IDC department. So the problem was like in rural households, they have this chula inside the house and a lot of smoke that comes here and the, you, you know, that the particles, um, uh, the particulate matter are not good for uh, this one, mm, not good for health. So one thing is that you need to make that efficient. The other is, of course, to uh, take the fume safely outside. Okay, So uh, most of so this uh, thing has been designed such that uh, it has got two potholes. So if you want, you can actually go and look up the web. You will find the detailed design of this, how it looks. There are actually two holes here. This one hole below this tawa, and there is one hole below this uh, vessel. So you put the thing here and uh, all the exhaust fumes uh, go through this nicely and, and there are lots of traps here so which will trap the particulate matter so even the exhaust gas that goes out uh, that does not contain um, particulate matter and also you see this there are lots of lines here essentially they are separate things which you can remove it so actually you can remove this part this part this part and then you can remove the ashes from here and then you can remove this and collect the uh, particulates from there so this is the application that has uh, won this uh, award and what we are doing going to do here is uh, not anything um, uh, with respect to the design but uh, with respect to the heat transfer on the outside surface okay so the uh, question is now, uh, of course, in a rural household, is, this thing is located inside the house and there are no fans or everything, right? anything. So the only thing that is there here is uh, still air. And this surface is obviously going to be hot. Uh, this surface here particularly will be at a much higher temperature compared to the uh, temperature of the chimney. So this is at one temperature, this is at another temperature. So the problem is to find out it. So suppose you are want to design all uh, this uh, chula. So suppose you want to do material of construction or things like that. You have to find out H. Like in the initial uh, first uh, uh, chapter when we have done such problems uh, where we have convection, radiation, and conduction. For convection, we always took the uh, constant H as given. But now that we know free convection, a forced convection, and now we are doing free convection, we can use correlations to actually determine H, right? So how to determine H? So the uh, problem is, so we are going to consider not exactly this, but an idealized interface. So what is the idealized interface we are considering? So we replace the entire uh, chula by a uh, cuboid. This has got a length, height, and uh, width. This height we denote as H1. And then there's a chimney, which is a cylinder, which has got a height H2 and a diameter D. Okay, so uh, approximately we have made all these uh, things. Uh, so the four sides of this uh, cuboid are vertical surfaces. So we saw in the lecture that the, when you have vertical surfaces, you have convection rules there. Then this top surface, because this is hot and outside is cooler, you could have a convection 
pattern here is free convection. Then there is a cylindrical surface, which is um, again vertical. Now the temperatures of the cuboid is given. So this temperature is given as 500 Kelvin. Temperature of the cylinder is given as 400 Kelvin. Uh, the emissivity of the brick is 0 0.9 and air temperature here. Okay, so that is given as uh, 300. So in this case, we need to first identify what uh, what correlation to use. Okay, so before that, what I want you to do is take your uh, pen and paper and draw the draw two things. One is uh, draw the convection flow. Okay, so where, wherever convection occurs on the side walls, uh, on three surfaces, right? The vertical surface, this is side vertical surface, one top surface, which is this, and the vertical cylindrical surface. So draw the possible convection flow, direction of flow, and if you can also draw the boundary layer. So remember for air, the uh, parental number is uh, 0 0.7, right? For air, it is 0 0.7. So uh, you must be able to draw the velocity uh, boundary layer. But before boundary layer, first draw the convection uh, pattern first. Boundary layer, by this time, I think most of you know how it is. But at least if you can draw the uh, convection pattern, okay, and post it on uh, WhatsApp. So I'll give you five minutes to do that, and then we will uh, discuss. Post it on WhatsApp when you are done. You can do surface by surface if you want. Then. Can you post at least one, any one? It's okay. You can quickly. It's okay. Uh, I think it's graded here. Just I want you to think about it so that we can be helpful when I show you the pattern in the next slide. Okay, we have got uh, Mr. Bond. He's got, yeah. I can't make out which is the top. Okay, fine. So, yeah, whatever you have got is fine. The top surface is fine. And this is the uh, second one we have got from Krishi. Uh, Krishi partly okay once the vertical surface is fine uh, but the horizontal surface is not right Krishi I'll show you that's okay doesn't matter uh, anybody else coming up
I just wait for one minute and then I'll go ahead. Okay, so let me just uh, go ahead. I, I don't see anybody uh, getting. Okay. So we have, uh, remember, when you have a hot surface which is facing up, right? You, this is a hot surface facing up, which is having a density stratification which is unfavorable. That is low density and high density on the top. So you will have rolls here and you will have vertical flow here so here there is there are no rolls here it's just vertical flow this way here you'll have rolls and here again your vertical flow so let's see that so this is how it is so the blue lines here are all can uh, velocity uh, lines so you have uh, rolls that are here like this so very far away it is uh, uh, 300 so here it is 300, here it is 5, and here it is 4. So now this goes up here because here the flow is going up like this. So here this edging edge also will have an upward flow because this kind of uh, disturbs it this way. And here in the edge, you will have both in the same direction. You cannot have this flow going up and that flow coming down because this flow going up will automatically in, introduce a flow in this direction. So this first cell would be like this. So suppose you had an infinitely long plate without any vertical thing, then this could be random. It could be coming down here like this and then going up here. It could be anyway. But because this is going up like this, this will automatically introduce a direction to those cells. So this will be this way. And here it will be down. Then here up, again here down. And here in this side, it gets again up because this has got a vertical motion. So this side will be up again. So here again, you have this upward motion. And uh, these are the uh, depiction of the boundary layer. And this is the temperature profile. So here the temperature is high here and reduces to T infinity, which is 300. Here from 500, it reduces to 300, which is T infinity. This, right? So the same thing here as well. So we have got the vertical, uh, we have got both the boundary layer and convection profiles. Right? So this is helps you to think about the problem, but what kind of uh, motion can occur? Right? Okay. Now. So uh, the problem is actually very simple. Um, that's why I'm spending more time on other things. The problem itself is simply going and looking up the corresponding uh, correlation functions. That's why I'm not spending much time there. And we're trying to see or trying to understand more of how things uh, happen and why it happens. Uh, so what we have to do is basically go and find out what is it for vertical cylinder? What is it for horizontal plane? What is it for vertical plane? That's all. Now, for all of them, you have to first determine the Rayleigh number. Okay. To determine the uh, Rayleigh number, uh, you would need uh, Rayleigh number is what? Grashoff into Prandtl. Okay. And in Grashoff, you have G beta delta T. Uh, L cube by what I forgot now. Wait. Uh, alpha and mu. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. 
So this, if you remove the this one here, so this entire quantity is uh, Rayleigh. So you need to determine the length scale in Rayleigh number. So that is the major thing. And of course, at what temperatures that you have to evaluate alpha, nu, and beta. Right? These things we need to determine at a particular temperature and the length scale. Now, for the vertical surface, the length scale is simply the height. This height, right? This height, which is in this case H1. Okay, that is the length scale for the vertical surface. For the horizontal surface, how will you take the length scale? So the recommended uh, correlation from the correlation functions, the recommend thing is that the length scale is defined by the surface area by perimeter. Okay, so if this is your uh, this we said as L and this is W. Sorry, no, this is L and this is W. So area is L times W and perimeter is 2 into L plus W. So this perimeter and this cross-sectional area. So this is a finite uh, surface with uh, where you want to take a length scale for the Rayleigh number that comes from area by perimeter. Okay, now that is done. Now the third surface we have is the cylinder. So in the case of cylinder, uh, we don't actually have a direct correlation for cylinder itself. However, a uh, cylinder can be approximated as a plate if the diameter is much greater than the boundary layer thickness. So what does it mean? So I have this cylinder like this. Okay. Now if the boundary layer is very small there, Okay, I just do. Oops, sorry. View. I deleted everything. Okay, one minute. Huh? So I have this. Cylinder and I have a very thin boundary layer. Okay, it's very thin. Okay. So this is my delta. Now, if you see, uh, it's like a flat earth model, right? Why? Because the height over which you are seeing, if that is small compared to this diameter, anybody who is standing here will say the earth is flat, right? So you basically, if this diameter is much large compared to this, then this is effectively the plate, this uh, vertical uh, boundary layer is actually seeing a flat plate. So for a vertical cylinder, you can use the same vertical flat plate correlation if D is much greater than delta. Okay, if D is much greater than delta, you can use. So how does this come? We'll just give you a quick uh, um, uh, background behind it. Uh, now, if you see how do you at how, how much is big okay how much is big to find that out if you act the boundary layer equations can be exactly solved so the temperature profile the dimensionless temperature profile versus eta which is the similarity variable which is y by x times uh, cash of power one by four so this similarity variable is your uh so the, the fun this is the temperature is a function of this similarity variable now, what is delta? Delta is the boundary layer thickness. That is at the distance at which uh, this temperature becomes kind of equal to the, uh, the surface, the, mm, the temperature profile equals the infinite temperature. So if you see the temperature at the surface, the dimensionless temperature is 1, and it becomes 0 at somewhere around 6 or so, 5 or 6 somewhere for almost all Prandtl numbers. For uh, higher the Prandtl number, of course, it becomes equal at 1 itself. But for practical case, for air, for example, things are around 0.7. So for 0.7, you can say that around 6. Okay? So around 6, okay, 
that is this uh, this entire function taking a value around six then that is essentially means this y by x times this one is six or this uh, y by x is nothing but delta so delta i by l if it is equal to six divided by gr power one by four approximately so this is the approximate uh, estimate of the boundary layer thickness now if you want to say this d compared to this so you simply say some three or four times this okay uh, four or five times this one so approximately by uh, experiments it's been found that if you use this value if d by l is greater than 35 so how this 35 came it is basically some uh, mm, there is one one by four times here okay one by four or four so that will some be some point uh, or 1.7 or something so that way you are uh, getting some four or five times this length so that is for air so practically you can use this so you find out if your d by l is greater than 35 by gr per 1 by 4 if this holds good then you can use this vertical uh, uh, surface approximation for even a cylinder so that's all the problem actually is uh, nothing more than that what you need to do is you have to find what is the average uh, temperature so what is the average temperature here so in this for this surface these three surfaces you can take the average temperature between 500 and 300 which is 400 and average temperature for this is 400 and 300 which is 350 so that is your uh, uh, film temperature so here it is 400 here it is 300 so approximately the film temperature you take it to be 350 somewhere there similarly here on this side you take it to be 400 so um, the work is actually very easy you just only thing is it a little bit uh, involved you need to go and find the temperature at this particular two temperatures you have to find the properties find all the properties at that and then uh, use the correct length scale okay for uh, some of the things if uh, some correlations are applicable over a large range of Rayleigh number in uh, some the, there is a transition there may be a laminar regime and there's a turbulent regime so if you want to find that you first find the transition Reynolds number in some cases so uh, uh, you, this is all problem dependent okay if there is a laminar and turbulent formula then find out what is the transition Reynolds, uh, transition uh, transition rally number if there is none then simply use the one which has got a wide range of uh, applicability once you find the rally number choose the appropriate function for nestle number so that way you can get h and from that you can find both convective loss and in this case it is also asked to find the radiative loss to to find out see in this uh, practical problem we can have both losses right from here you could have radiative loss because it's inside a room and the room because it's a large surface we can take it to be a black body so that radiative loss is that convective loss is also there so the idea here is to not only determine the uh, age but also in the problem you have to also determine the convective coefficients so like last time we have given you the uh, results for this particular problem that numerical problem with the given uh, lwh uh, the rally number is given so these both are below 0 0.9 uh, below 10 power 9 and for this pipe flow uh, there is a very large range the uh, formulas applicable so this is also fine and uh, find h and what is asked is these four so you will notice that for the side walls it is uh, comparable you cannot neglect convective transfer and tell only i will take radiative in here also it's roughly about half here it is little more than half so uh, if you really want to neglect convective transfer, this is one way to estimate. So in this case, we can't really neglect. So that is why we are asking you to compute both. Okay. So
so uh, I'll just go to the next problem because this is a little more. Uh, you need to look up some tables and uh, find the properties. So I will not wait for you to complete anything. Uh, we can uh, discuss for some time and then we'll go to the next problem. Oh shit! I didn't record. Okay, I'll I'll try to get it done. Okay, so uh, I'll pause now for some time. Uh, if you have questions, I'll unmute you guys. Yeah. There's a question here. Uh, what is Nassel? Any square? What is that, Nassel? Krishi? No, sir. I thought a uh, graph of number had any square in its denominator. Graph of number had what? N u square in the denominator, not no, 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 no. sir. And also one more question while finding a oh, by yeah, yeah. E. of number had yes, yes. But uh, what I wrote there is Prandtl because you will multiply and divide by after Prandtl multiplication, one of those things will go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you are right. Huh? Yeah, yeah, tell me. And also, sir, uh, like while finding a by p, will we remove the area of that cylinder covered? Uh, no, 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 it's not required. You see. Uh, it doesn't make much difference. You see, it's the side side surface is six. This is eight. See, the heat transfer coefficient is about ten. So you won't really make significant uh, corrections. So don't remove any of those things. Uh, anyway, if you see if it's, if you see in terms of a practical problem, also what have we done? We have completely replaced all these things by a single cuboid. Okay. Okay, this is only to quickly estimate uh, the convective heat transfer parameter. So you don't need to be so accurate. You don't need to remove the uh, uh, area of the cylinder. Simply take uh, L by uh, W. This L by W. Just L by W. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll just go through the answers later. Yeah, sorry, I'll just. So the problem, have you taken a picture of this? Please take a snap of this. And then the answer. Sir, could you go one slide back? One back, yeah. Yeah. The procedure. Shum, you can ask. Unmute yourself and ask. Shall I go ahead, Shum? I see your typing not completed. Okay, I'll go to the next problem then. The next problem is a jacketed pipe. Okay, what, what is a jacketed pipe? So jacket, uh, as you know, is something which is a covering. Right? So a jacketed pipe uh, looks something like this. So this pipe carries the uh, liquid, maybe a hot liquid or a cold liquid, whatever it is. Then we have another pipe that is covering it. This pipe is called as the jacketed pipe, jacket pipe. So this 
outer pipe provides like a jacket to this so inside this there is uh, air there is nothing so some it will uh, 3d it looks something like this so if you can see this is this internal pipe here then there is an outer pipe with a different diameter so it's uh, this entire diameter is not the in inside pipe it is only a smaller thing the outside that you have here this is completely sealed you see this is sealed so once you fill air inside you fill it and then uh, leave it sealed the other end is also sealed so only the pipe has got inlet to the liquid here and then there is a outlet there so you know that air has got a low uh, thermal conductivity right so in a sense you are providing a uh, insulation okay it's, it's like a cheap insulation that instead of having a uh, material of construction there right you are having air instead so you are having air which is acting like a uh, poor conductor okay? again the problem here is um, jacketed pipe has air in the annular cavity find the outer temperature of the jacket okay this temperature outer temperature you have to find this temperature of this jacket uh, the radius of the inner pipe and jacketed pipe are given the room temperature is given 30 degrees and the temperature of the carrier pipe okay so this carrier pipe uh, outside surface temperature is given as 70 degrees so here it is 70 the room is at 30 and uh, there is a drop here maybe it comes to 50 and then from 50 to 30 it goes or maybe it comes to 35 and from 35 it drops here so how effective is this jacket okay that is the problem we have to find so that will also help you design the diameter of this uh, jacket right so you want to find the diameter of the jacket what should be the diameter so that i get a particular temperature so that could be another uh, design question but we are not doing that that's a little uh, uh, complex what we simply do is uh, find out the outside temperature given a particular diameter okay given this diameter find the temperature okay now let's go so the transport phenomena and the flow pattern that occurs here are uh, something like this so this is the cross section of the entire pipe so there's, there's this inner cylinder which carries uh, the hot fluid which is at 70 degrees then in this region is air and this is insulated nothing can come in or go out this small pink region here is the outer cylinder so this outer cylinder is like this now if you let's just look at the outer cylinder here this outer cylinder uh, outside here is uh, air at uh, infinity from here to here it is an unbounded region hmm? semi-infinite region then this is hot and uh, this temperature is uh, 30 degrees and here it is 70. So in this case you have a, a natural convection in this we will also have what is known as plume so uh, uh, hot uh, this one rises from here hot air rises from here it goes around this and con converges and meets there and this side also meets so this is called as a plume. Again, so there are heat transfer correlations for this. This is outside. This is a simple external flow. And here we have an internal flow. Okay, this is external flow, natural convection. Here we have internal flow, natural convection. So the previous problem we saw, it was all cylinders. So it was a vertical cylinder, external flow, side wall, external flow, top wall, external flow. Here we have a cylinder. But it is horizontal. Okay, horizontal cylinder, that's why the flow is like this. But this is external flow. And between this uh, cylinder and the inner cylinder, there is an annular gap. 
So what happens in the annular gap? So now this is the internal cylinder and this will form a plume like this. So for this cylinder, this is like an external flow. Okay, for this cylinder, the flow here is external like this. So flow will come here, will go up there, come here, go up there, and then form a plume there. But this plume cannot go to infinite distance like here. So it will hit the outer wall and then rotate back inside. So this also hit outer wall and rotate back inside. Okay. So imagine that this uh, pipe is like this long pipe here. So throughout this pipe, you will have, so you have this inner cylinder here. And then throughout this pipe, you will have this convection rules. Everywhere you have this convection rules throughout the cylinder. Okay. So this rules uh, are internal flow, but for this, it looks as though it is external. And then there is external. Flow. So this is the <coughs> free convection phenomena that is happening in this case. And what is asked is what is the temperature at the outer? This T, T O, T outer, this is the unknown. What is known? Inner temperature is known and uh, outer air temperature is known. These both are known. Yeah, this inner temperature, this is known. Outer temperature is known. <clears throat> so the problem is will be one of steady state because at steady state, the uh, flux would have uh, become uh, a steady profile. And this temperature drop will be here. There's another temperature drop here. So the rate of heat generated from the in inner cylinder has no way to go out except through this. So from here to here, it is convection. Of course, here to here, there could be radiation. But again, that we ignore for the moment. Uh, so here to here, convection. And again, there's a small conduction thing here that also we'll let signal because it's metal compared to this one. Air, we will just ignore it for the moment. So there is convection. Then here it is almost the same temperature. And then again, another convection. So if you plot the temperature uh, inside, it will be like this, say 70 degrees. And then maybe this goes to 40, I don't know where, up to this, from here to here. And then again, from there to there, another jump, something like that. Maybe this is 30. Okay, So we need to find the steady temperature. We don't actually want to find the temperature profile, but just find the temperature at this point. What is this? Okay, This 40, we don't know. We want to find this. And for that, we are saying that the heat from here goes out only through this. So it's a steady state balance. Firstly, <coughs> suppose we assume that there is no conduction, here, there is no convection, here, there is no free convection. Okay. So this can be taken as still air, right? So if it is still air, then you will have a thermal conductivity of air. So just as we did in chapter uh, in conduction chapter 1D conduction, this is you will know the <clears throat> you can find the effective thermal conductivity of this medium, not effective the um, temperature drop will be given by this that is, uh, it is simply not k times delta t, but it is k divided by log of r naught minus r i. R naught is the outer radius, R i is the inner radius. So the heat flux inner from inner surface is simply K times delta T divided by this. If it was normal plane wall, it will be simply K delta T. Okay? Heat flux is simply K delta T. But this is not a plane wall. This is a concentric uh, space in an annular region. So there you have K by R0 minus R1. This is there in equation 3.32 in that chapter. So this is pure conduction. It would happen like this. Now, for free convection, 
what people have done is they said that instead of finding a new correlation let me just use the same formula okay but instead of k i will use a new k called as k effect okay now k remember that k is a material property it is not a flow property it is not dependent on velocity it is not dependent on temperature of course temperature is there but it is not dependent on gravity or anything of that sort flow it's not dependent on velocity okay it's not a different function of velocity however you are writing the correlation function for this annular region which is this okay so if you have convection okay then use uh, the correlation function people have derived is something like this. instead of k you replace by k effective where k effective is uh, k times this factor at uh, this factor is not material property only this is material property this is not material property this is a function of rayle number so the velocity comes here and the pro other property is the prandtl number so you, we know that in free convection these are the only two parameters that come so the free convection is accounted for by using this formula okay so to find q prime okay q i prime that is the internal uh, heat flux from the internal surface if we know delta t instead of k we use k effective and we can find uh, um, ra ra is simply g beta delta t by delta t l cube by nu alpha l okay again l here uh, is some length scale again this is also by some correlation or uh, from analytical expression it has been derived so we don't need to see how it has been derived we just use that so the uh, length scale in rayle number is given by this is uh, there in this equation below this you can get that okay. so this uh, find l from here then you can find ra if you find ra you can find this so essentially we have got k effect we know k effect so we know the value of k effect and if we know ti and to okay ti we know but we don't know to okay uh, so we really can't determine qi so we need uh, one more equation uh, we can't uh, directly solve this because uh, this uh, rale number also depends on to okay the rale number also depends on to so let's look at the other thing <clears throat> now outer what we saw was inner now outer we need to see so we said that at steady state qi is equal to q out so this is the uh, control this volume balance that we have any any heat flux coming from here equal to the heat flux going out there so this is the steady state balance so if you write in terms of resistance so if you write i have the i put a resistance here and another resistance here okay, so we have two resistances this is r i this is r out so in terms of resistances so this one will be ti this is unknown t outer this is known t infinity so because this is uh, whatever flux comes here goes here you can find out what this um, equating these both okay this flux equal to this flux and individually they are equal to this and ri you know which is the internal resistance comes from k effective which is this expression essentially ra expression is this factor which multiplies this right so this qi is delta t by ri so this ri comes from this expression here 
similarly r o is coming from a heat transfer coefficient estimated from the outside convection free convection so that is uh, in terms of heat transfer coefficient if you write h a delta t this will be h and uh, this is uh, area in because we are considering per unit length it will be simply 2 pi r not only okay so now we need to determine h okay h for what condition a condition where you have a pipe horizontal cylinder and external flow so that is there in equation 9.34 from there you can find uh, nusselt number and from nusselt number you can find h the problem here is even after writing all this we have this equation okay uh, if ri and ro are constants then i can directly solve for t not okay however ri depends on rale number okay this k effective depends on rale number and rale number depends on delta t and this is a non linear function it's like this power 1 by 4 and then there is this thing power 1 by 4 and all these things are there similarly for outer also r outer is based on the nusselt number this nusselt number also depends on the rale number of the outside flow right so uh, remember rale number is like your reynolds number right so if you have more and more uh, rale number you're going to have uh, like uh, closer to turbulence so it depends on the rale number and prandtl number the nusselt number depends on rale number and prandtl number so ho also depends on uh outer rale number and outer rale number depends on this delta t so this both ri and ro are functions of to t outer so we need to do some numerical method of solving so because this is a non linear equation so here already we know it is coming as t power 1 by 4 here it might come up some some other power So instead of solving it analytically, we are going to solve it first time. We are going to solve it uh, numerically. So you can use uh, MATLAB, or you can use uh, Excel also. In Excel, if you do iterative solving, that will also work. So what you do is initially start with a guess value for T naught. So what is the initial guess? You take the mean of the inner and outer temp. So you know this is uh, say 70 degrees. Uh, outer air is 30 degrees. so this is mean is 50 so at 50 you find the temperature uh, all the properties and use that to compute the rale number and from rale number you can find the resistance and using that you compute t not again from new t not find new rale number new resistance and you have to loop through that okay so i'll just write down the things here i forgot to write or maybe if you want step wise so take t not then find ra ra outer and ra inner and from that you find r outer and r inner and from that you find t not and then loop over this okay so once you get converged value then that is your final temperature so everything will be con internally consistent the only approximation that you'll be doing is the properties now have to be you can't at every time you can't be finding out the property so instead what you do the properties you evaluate at the initial temperature mean temperature which in this case is 50 degrees okay at find out the properties you keep it at one particular value but the uh, this final temperature you do iteratively okay so i will if you do uh, i hope you have taken down the problem if not please take it down this is the problem take a snapshot and for this problem the answer is 
the outer temperature is this. Sir? Yeah, I'm, I'm just stopping here, well, one minute. Yeah, yes, Krishi. Yes, sir, uh, for the outer cylinder, we'll take the nasal number correlation related to like a